welcome to STEM Pro Live. We are here today with um, at Freeport McMoran with Michelle Montague and Jared Carroll. Uh, my name is Gail and I'm with Maricopa County Education Service Agency and we're partnered with American Graduate PBS. Jared and, um, or, sorry, um, uh, Michelle and Jarek are going to share with us a little bit about what they do um, at the mines as a senior geologist and a mining engineer. And so we're going to listen to them share what, what they do and then we're going to venture into a mind. So teachers, uh, go ahead and get those chats uh, going and we'll answer questions at the end. My name is Michelle Montague and I'm the Senior Geologist at um, Miami Operations at Freeport McMoran. And so I'm going to talk a little bit about what I do at Miami. And one of the things as a Senior Geologist is I get to go out in the field and spend part of my day in the beautiful weather of the, inside the um, mine. And I get, to, um, I get to sample blast holes and get to look at how many minerals and rocks are inside them and identify them. And we take this information and we put it in a block model in the computer in the office. And so taking all the mineralization and all the materials we find can uh, tell them, you know, is this ore, is this waste out in the pit. I really enjoy it. And some of the minerals you can see behind us are some of the minerals we find in our pit. We have uh, native copper and we have malachite, malachite, azurite. And so the, some of the fun part of being a geologist out in the pit is seeing these minerals as you're wandering around and deciding is this going to go as ore or waste. My name is Jarek Carroll and I'm a mine engineer at the Miami Mine. And I am working as what's called a geomechanical engineer, which means that I watch the slopes. Our mine is a, a big open pit. So one of the things that we need to do is make sure that it's safe for everybody that works there to be, be in the mine. So I do that. Um, we have two different radar systems that we use that, that can measure how quickly the, wall is, the walls are moving. And then also another way that we can measure movement in the walls is using prisms. So this is a prism in the mine. Um, we'd put this on a, a metal stand so that it can stand up. And all this is is it's a piece of plastic that's cut so that we can shoot a laser beam at it. And when the laser beam hits it, it'll bounce that laser beam back to, um, to where we're measuring from. And it can tell us, it can measure the distance and tell us if it's, if that, where that prism is, is moving at all. So as the slopes engineer, that's kind of what I do and make sure that it's safe for everyone to, to be there. Um, the other thing that I'm doing is, is I'm doing the blasting. In a mine, in order to mine the material, first we have to break it so that we can move it. And we do that using explosives. So like Michelle was saying, we, we drill blast holes in the mine and after she goes out and and collects her samples to know what's out there. Uh, we come in and, and we fill the holes with explosives and, and we um, detonate the explosives, we blow it up so that, so that the rock is broken and we can move it out. And so I design that, I make sure that the blasts are designed so that everything's safe and also so that um, when we blast it, that the, it's blasted as, as best as we can so that the rock breaks good and so that we know where where the material that Michelle found is without mixing it all up. So that's kind of what I do as a mining engineer. Should we describe some of the equipment behind here? Yeah, so one of the pieces of equipment we use, we call this a loader. Um, it's a lot bigger in her life, but um, so this loads the haul trucks. That's the haul truck. To get a sense of how big that is in her life, that's about 30 feet tall, so it's about as big as a two-story house. Um, so that's really big equipment so that we can move a lot of material. Um, 260 tons. 260 tons, how much fits in it. And our Miami mine is pretty small, we only have five of those. But at the bigger mines, they could have anywhere from 20 to um, our biggest mine um, has over 100 haul trucks like that. So, and then, yes. And also just kind of for, for work that needs done around the mine, if we need to move material, we have um, dozers, a bulldozer. So it's just like what you would see on the side of the road, except a lot bigger. Um, it's probably 20 to 20 feet tall um, in real life. So it's, it's pretty big. The, just the blade on front is six to eight feet tall. So it can move a lot of material. That's, <laughs> that's kind of how we do it. We try and move as much as we can. So as a geologist and a mine engineer, um, 
that we're only a small part of what goes on in a mine. So we're going to watch a video that kind of explains what else is going on and, and how things work. Hi, my name's Ralph Stegan. I'm a geologist with Freeport Mac Moran Exploration. We're in the Marinci District in Southeast Arizona, looking at some exposures that a geologist would see if they're walking around the area in proximity to a large copper mine. Notice that there's red coloration throughout the entire uh, exposure and it's covered by trees. So this is the type of thing where geologists would walk around, look at the rocks, make the observations and record them and then take them back to the office using some rock samples, some other sort of geophysical techniques to synthesize, work up all of the, the data that would result in what we think of the potential that this area would have for containing copper. So we're in an exposure along a road where you can see that there's this greenish blue colored material, that's where the copper is, contained within a zone that might be one to two inches thick. So the rock that this copper is within, as you can see, it's localized here, but not necessarily outside of the rock. And so this could be the upper expression of a large copper deposit that a geologist would consider as a potential for an open pit. As an example of a typical technique that we do in the field is we come across a rock like this. You can see there's this darker brown streak. We scratch it, use our finger, and then we do what we call a smudge test. So if I want to contrast that with material outside of that dark zone, And as you can clearly see, there's two different colors that represent the amount of, of, of iron, and it's indicative of a process that helps us understand the potential for copper mineralization at depth. So a geologist will walk around this entire area making these kinds of observations, look at it at a map, consider what all of that means, and then think about proposing a drilling program that would ascertain the potential to evaluate a target. We then bring the drill rig in, who by the drilling process will produce a cylinder of rock that looks like this. So this is a, a typical thing a geologist will do to see the rock better is to wet it. And you can see that brings the texture in the rock out a lot more clear that we can make determinations in of what its mineralogy, alteration, and significance are. So as a senior geologist at the mine, um, some of the requirements to become a senior geologist um, is uh, getting a lot of science and math in high school and, and college to get my degree. I actually did not like science in high school, so I only took a few years of it and, and went on to uh, college thinking I was going to get a business degree. but. Um, as I was taking science classes, because as a general requirement, I learned real quickly um, I loved science. And so I actually got my degree in geology and, and teaching geology. And then I got my master's in geology as well. So, I, you know, it really, I enjoy solving puzzles. And to me, geology is like a big puzzle, a mystery. You have to put pieces together out in the field and figure out what happened here, where could all the copper and ore be, and where, how do we get it out of there and find a place, you know, mine it so that it's, um, we can use it in everyday equipment and like your, your belt buckles and your cell phones and your cars. And so the journey of just getting the math and science, I actually wish I had done more science in high school to get to college because that would have helped me a little bit. But I really enjoyed the math and science behind it. And that's one of the reasons why I went into geology is I enjoyed the the, the science behind it and learning about the rocks. So um, I didn't really know that I wanted to become a, a mining engineer or, or any type of engineer um, until probably my senior year of, of high school. Uh, when I started looking at colleges, I, I didn't know what I wanted to do. But I had a really good physics teacher in my junior and senior year of high school. And he, he kind of helped me to, to find out that, that I liked that, that I liked math, I liked science. And, and I wanted to do things where, where I'd have to develop that, that mindset of, of thinking like a, a scientist or, or a mathematician. Um, we did a lot of experiments in his class where 
where we'd have to design the experiment and then go out and do it, collect our own data. So that kind of gave me an introduction to, to thinking like an engineer and, and kind of thinking in that mindset. So then as I started looking at different kinds of engineering, I wanted something too where I wasn't gonna have to sit behind a desk all day, where I could get out in the field and, and see what I was actually working on, see, see what my designs were, were actually doing. And so that's kind of what put me on the path to becoming a mining engineer. Um, like Michelle said, we're maybe at our desks half the day and the rest of the time we're out in the field uh, making sure that, that everything's working the way that it should. Um, and really that, through, all throughout college, I, I just graduated. I graduated from the University of Arizona in December and I've just been working at Miami since the beginning of February. So, mm -hmm. so just over two months I've been here and, and it's been great so far, but all throughout, all throughout college, um, the math classes and the science classes were challenging. They were probably some of the hardest classes that I had to take, but it was a good challenge and it was a challenge that I enjoyed. I enjoyed learning about um, physics and how, how our world works. And it's something where, you know, maybe I'm not doing the hard, the hard math and the hard science every day, but what I learned there still carries over. And those concepts are things I'm using every day when, I, when I'm out in the mine. So, so that's kind of how I got to where I am, and I don't know, we have questions now? Sure. So one student asked, um, is there some special technology or equipment that you wear in, um, when you're in the mine? So I think one thing is we use GPS in the mine, um, especially when we're trying to survey holes, because we need to know the exact location of where these assays are. And so we have a tremble unit, so we go out and actually uh, survey in using the global positioning system to figure out where it is on the earth and where it is in our pit. And so that's one part of equipment we use. Mm -hmm. um, I have some equipment that I use to, to watch the slopes. I have two radar systems that are um, pretty, pretty advanced technology, really. Um, so, and it just, it's a radar, just like a radar that we'd use, that like airports use to keep track of airplanes. And it, it measures how fast the walls are moving. Um, and as far as the equipment we carry with us, we don't really have any high tech stuff. Safety is mm. a big focus in mining. Yep. So we have hard hats and those bright reflective vests that you see construction workers wearing. You know, we always wear those when we're out, but we don't have any high tech technology that we carry with us, yeah. but we do have high technology, high technology that we use every day. It's kind of neat in the haul trucks. They actually have technology where they watch the uh, haul truck driver's eyes so that if they get sleepy at any moment, um, it alerts the driver by shaking his seat a little bit and notifies dispatch. So they know that, you know, this person needs maybe have a break or needs to stop for a moment. And so I think that's an interesting piece of technology also that, again, goes back to safety that we have in our pit. And so I, I think kind of a neat technology there. Yeah. So a student wants to know, um, when you get the minerals out of the, uh, out of the mine, what happens to them? What so is that process? At our mine, um, we have what's called a, a mine for leach operation. So what that means is that we take the, mine, the minerals and we don't, um, the only processing that we do is we'll, once they're blasted, they're pretty crushed up and, and a lot smaller sizes is probably about as big as a, a piece you would find after it's been blasted. We take that and we dump it in a big pile and there's a, a sulfuric acid solution that we apply to the mineral yeah. and because of the chemistry of the minerals and the chemistry of the sulfuric acid, the acid will stick or the metals will stick to the acid and as the acid drains through the what's called the leach pad, then we collect that solution at the bottom and then we're able to further process it and pull the metals out of, out of that sulfuric acid solution. Um, you can probably add more to that. Just that um, it goes through a process of copper plating so they can um, get the um, copper out um, at the, um, at the um, tank house. And so it's just another process of getting the mineral out so that it can be used in other places. Yeah. Uh, this question is about what classes should a student focus on to become a mining engineer? So. For mining engineer and any type of engineering, all the math and science that you can take, the better. Um, in high school, start in high school, it's gonna be a lot easier. In college, if you get a good base in, in high school, I had a really good calculus teacher in, in high school and, and a really good physics teacher. And what I learned in those classes, probably the most valuable thing I learned was how to learn, kind of the process of how to study um, and what's important, how to take notes. Um, that's the biggest thing I learned from, from my math and science classes in high school and that helped me so much 
when I got to the university and, and started taking classes and you're in a room with, with 300 people and, and once you know how to take notes that becomes a lot easier. But math and science, as the more you can get the better. You're, you're never going to be able to get too much of that for, for mining engineering. I encourage a lot of people to go take a science or a math mm -hmm. at a community college also. It just is a, a way to um, get exposed to it. If you think you're going to have problems with it, it's a smaller environment where you can get more help. And so I encourage a lot of people, if there's a, if you're a little worried about it or scared of it, maybe a community college, just at your senior year, try it and see what you think of it. I, I think that's always a great experience. Uh, so this question is about how have you ever found gold in your copper mines or any other minerals other than copper? So we don't have gold in our pit. Um, there probably is a little tiny bit, but we never see it. Um, same with silver. But we do have um, moly, molybdenite, and I don't, we don't have a sample of here tonight. Um, we also have galena far in the corner there. But those are minerals that are in the pit as well. Um, we don't process them, but they do they get on the stockpile. We do uh, see them, um, they do get processed a little, but never as a final product. Uh, this question is, how deep is the mine? Our mine, so it's an open pit, so you, you're not going underground, um, but it's probably about 1,500 feet from top to bottom. Yeah. So in the early 1800s in our pit, um, they were actually mining it underground, and right now we're mining some of those underground work workings out. And it's really neat to see all the wood and um, to see how they mined in the, in the early, late 1800s, early 1900s. Um, but ours is open pit now. Yep. Um, here's a question. Do you travel to different mines in different, in, uh, different countries? I don't currently, but that is a possibility as a mining engineer. Um, with, with our company, they do do a lot of, you know, they'll send you to a mine so you can learn how they do things there. That way we're sharing what we learn, but, but as a mining engineer, that's definitely a possibility. And that's something I hope to do someday at some point is to be able to go. I'd particularly like to go to South America and, and work at some of the mines there. That's kind of neat so. thing of our careers, of being a mine engineer or geologist, we do a lot of uh, going to other countries, seeing other cultures and other people, and, and seeing other lands and other areas of um, landforms, and so I enjoy that part. Mm -hmm. of, and so I hope to get to go to South America or Africa and some of the other places over the years to see some of the other pits. Um, how did school prepare you to work in a mine? Um, I think so as a geologist, um, when I went into geology at the University of Arizona, there was, uh, there's geologists for water, there's geologists for um, oceanography water, there's geologists that go different ways. And so mine's not particularly one of the ones that they, um, it's just an option of many, many kind of type of options. So we can go, um, if you don't like working in a mine, you can go work other locations as well. Um, I know in my classes, I took ones that are, are aimed towards the mine environment just because um, that's what I was interested in. Um, and I found um, the idea of solving the puzzle in the, in the mine and trying to figure out where the ore came from is more exciting to me. Yeah, for me, I think the biggest thing was learning to, to work in a group. Um, as geologists and engineering, we're all working together and we all work on one small piece of the puzzle and we have to bring it all together. So working with groups in school, doing group projects and, and even doing sports and things like that um, helped me to learn how to be a team player and, and work together so that we can all, all achieve what we're working for and all work together. So. Uh, can students go to the mines for tours? Yeah, we actually have, um, our mine has tours. Um, that we we'll probably have one every month or so that's scheduled through our administration and we actually take them out into the uh, pit so they can see um, the haul trucks and the, and the equipment and the rocks and minerals and we talk about you know what's um, what are all the different mineral types in our in our uh, mine and um, how all the equipment works yeah. uh, a question on um, how do you pull them the metals out yeah, so that goes back to, you know, we were talking about the leach pad and, and we apply that, that sulfuric acid solution. And because of the, the chemistry, um, the metal really likes the sulfuric acid, so they stick together and the metal becomes dissolved in a liquid, just like when you drop sugar or, or salt into water and the sugar or salt dissolves, it's, it's just like that. And the acid dissolves the metal and then that travels down kind of like through, like when gravel gets wet, the water goes through it. So the 
sulfuric acid travels through the leach pad and at the bottom we have a pond where it all collects and then we're able to pump it through pipes out of the pond and then it goes off to, to the tank house like Michelle said and, and we're able to further process it and, and get the actual solid metal out of that. Um, how much time are you in the mine and then in an office? So for each of us, it's about it's about half and half. Yeah. We, you know, I have to go out every day for the blasts when we're blasting and make sure that all the everything's being done how it should be. Make sure that that the guys that are actually out there loading loading the holes and, and applying the explosives that, that they're safe and make sure that they have everything that they need. Yeah, I would say I spend half the day. Um, we work eight-hour shifts, so probably four hours a day I'm out in the pit looking at the um, areas that they just recently blasted or are going to blast and looking for the ore and the waste and deciding which way it goes. Um, again, we also look at slopes and constantly looking at safety and making sure everybody is working in the mine is safe. What subject should a, a student focus on to become a geologist? Um, I think the biggest thing in becoming a geologist is um, enjoying, so enjoying your sciences. I learned a lot from taking sciences, especially as a freshman in, in college. I took chemistry, atmospheric science, I took astronomy. Um, as a geologist, you learn a lot about the earth, and that was one of the things I really enjoyed, was learning how, you know, how these landforms in the earth are created and uh, how the earth will evolve, continue to grow, and, and, and how it changes, and like volcanoes and earthquakes, and these big glaciers up in the ice caps. And so I think definitely any type of science is really a great idea to explore geology and learn more about it. Uh, let's see here. So what is your favorite part of your job? My favorite part is the interaction that we get um, you know, there's there's lots of people that come. We don't we don't run these pieces of equipment. We we don't know how. Uh, they're the experts in that, and and I really enjoy being able to interact with them and and work with them. You know, they they bring a different perspective to thing to things. A lot of times, they think of something that that we don't we haven't even considered, and and many times that turns out to be a good idea and something that we should be doing. So I really enjoy that interaction. I agree. I definitely I think one of the biggest things about the job as a mine engineer or geologist is you work with lots of other people from different cultures and different nations um, and just different you know areas, operations to uh, metallurgists to all sorts of parts of the of the business. So even like the accountants, we talk to them and so I enjoy meeting all the different people and, and communicating with them. I also just love going out in the field and seeing is there uh, seeing all the beautiful minerals and rocks. I mean that's probably one of my big favorite things is is learning about all the, the, the different types of material that's there and, and seeing the, the prize every time that we, we start mining a different area. Um, how deep do you have to dig to find copper? So it, it really depends. Copper comes, a lot of times you find copper in areas where there was volcanism or uh, metamorphism, so some type of change by volcanoes uh, that had a magma chamber at one time that was rock that was heated up and then cooled off and water came through. We get a lot of copper minerals in that type of area. And so um, those materials, that that's where we kind of find uh, the copper at. And so. Um, yeah, it can change from mine to mine. Yeah. Um, so some areas it can be really shallow, up to, right on the surface, depending on if the volcanism was close to it. Some areas it can be very deep, um, several thousands of feet. I think there's a there's some mines nearby us that have copper that's at least eight or nine thousand feet into mm -hmm. the ground, and they're actually drilling that deep to get to it. Uh, how long have you been working in the mines? So I just barely started. I graduated from in, in December and I started in February, but prior to that I, I've had a series of in, internships. So especially during the summers, you know, I, I applied for internships and was able to work in the mines and, and those internships were just as valuable as, as going to school. Um, they, for me, they kind of reconfirmed that this is, this is what I want to be doing, this is something I like and enjoy. And, and it was a really valuable learning experience, you know, and it's helped me to, to apply what I was learning in the classroom and see how it all fits together. 
Um, I've been at our particular mine for seven years, and um, I enjoy it a lot. I, I actually graduated high school or college 14 years ago, but when I came out, it was um, a time where there wasn't very much mining going on. So I went in and taught high school for seven years, and then from there moved into the mine. But even at the high school level, I enjoyed because I taught geology, so that was the best part. I got, got to teach what I love, so it still got to do what I like. Uh, this student asked, have you ever found any liquid, type of liquid in the mine? We have lots of water, lots of, lots of groundwater <laughs> at our mine. Um, and it can actually be a problem sometimes. You know, we, have to, we have to pump it out and we drill wells to pump out the water so that it, it doesn't become a, a safety issue in, in our mine. There used to be at one time some mercury in our pit. It's long gone, but it was actually almost in a liquid state as well. And so there is a little bit of minerals there in that, that liquid state, but not as often. But yeah, water is the big thing in our pit because it affects all our slopes. And so they're constantly changing how the slopes look in our mine, and we have to work around it. Do you use math every day in your, um, in your work? Yes. Yeah, I agree. <laughs> yes, to one degree or another. Um, you know, all these, all these measurements, we, we do all this data we collect. We have to process that and filter it, and, and that's where the math comes in. And I notice a lot of, we have a lot of programs that we, you know, we spend part of our day in the office and we use those programs to check our math. But still, I think it's important that we know how the math is done. And so if we find a mistake, because the computers don't always are accurate, and there are sometimes mistakes in there, and we can find that because we have those skills. How long does it take to, uh, from the time that you, uh, to, to find the minerals? So it depends um, if a geologist, so one, another part of geology in our, in our corporation is we have a geologist go out and explore. And they actually go and they take a drill rig and they drill into the ground looking for the mineralization. And they, they can drill just a couple feet and start finding it or, or a thousand feet. And so it depends on how long it takes to get that drill rig out there. But it could take, to get a whole mine started, it could take several years, um, probably five or seven years at yeah. least, to get from the process of starting the drilling all the way to getting the, the first truck there to mine it. The neat part is we're there from the very beginning to the end. So we get to see this whole process bloom and form. Uh, question about getting lost in the mine. Does anyone get lost in <laughs> mines? <laughs> yes, so I'm brand new. So, um, you know, a mine, there's lots of roads that go to different places. Um, but when we're out, we all, everyone carries a radio. So if you get lost, you can, you can radio someone to, to come and find you. And I think the key is in our pit is that we make sure everybody knows where they're going before we let them go. So again, it's a safety issue. Yep. So how big is the mine? Um, do you know miles? How wide the pit is? It's a couple of miles wide and a mile across. So yeah, yeah it's it's fairly big. Our pit's small, considered like Marinci, where you saw the video from. So it depends on what where you're at. But ours is about a mile to two miles. Okay. okay. Okay, so we'd like to thank uh, Freeport McMoran uh, and Michelle and Jarek uh, for um, helping us today um, in this wonderful presentation about um, mining engineering and uh, a senior geologist. Um, make sure you tune in for our next STEM Pro Live.